College is supposed to be the best time of your life. But, what if you hate it like I did, but you still want that sweet ass degree? Well, little known hack, but you can actually graduate in three years at some colleges, depending on all the rules and stuff. But at Stanford, which is the college I went to, you can graduate in three years as long as you complete all the requirements. So, in today's video, I'm going to be telling you guys how I did that, what classes I took, how I planned for all that stuff, and looking back on it, do I think it was the right decision. So, without further ado, let's jump into the video. Before we get into how I actually managed to do the graduating in three years thing, I think I want to talk about why I decided to leave Stanford early. Because, you know, Stanford is supposed to be this amazing school with all these amazing possibilities. Wow, it's so amazing. Everyone says it's like Disneyland. But for me, it wasn't. I feel like after my first year at Stanford, I really didn't feel like I was growing as a person that much. And I felt like it was time for me to move on and do something else with my life. I didn't really like the culture at Stanford. It was very like fake and I don't know, kind of like preppy almost to me. And I just didn't really vibe with it. And I felt like who I was as a person was just being stuck in like this one place. And I wasn't like learning new things or just like becoming the person I was supposed to grow into in life. I don't know, this sounds, this might sound very like weird and new agey, but you know, I wasn't, I wasn't like growing as a person. And obviously college costs a lot of money. Stanford costs a lot of money. Those dudes at r and I don't know why you guys are charging like $4,000 a month to live in these dorms because that's absurd considering these dorms are like tiny jail cells. But yeah, so obviously I'm like, well, I don't want to be paying a ton of money to not really be growing, but I also kind of need this college degree because in our society, for some reason, we really need a college degree to be able to move up economically in our society. Whatever. And also, my friend, she also decided to graduate in three years. So I was like, oh shit, if she can do it, I can do it. She kind of really helped push me on this idea. Like, hey, if you don't like college, you don't have to force yourself to stay another year. If you don't want to, you can leave in three years. And that really was kind of the push I needed to be able to really go, go through with this. So big thank you to her. One more thing I want to say is I'm not trying to flex or anything or pretend like graduating early is some big accomplishment. And even if you don't graduate in four years, it doesn't mean you're not as smart. You're, it probably just means you're, you know, you're doing the normal thing, which is fine. You don't have to be a masochist and try to force yourself through college in three years. I just want to put this out there because, you know, it's an option for you if you're not having the time of your life at college, which I wasn't, and know that, hey, you don't have to follow this prescribed four-year plan. There's other options out there. All right. On to the actual part of the video where I talk about how I actually graduated in three years. So I actually didn't really plan to graduate in three years. Uh, when I first started Stanford, I was planning to do the normal four year thing because I was like, wow, Stanford, so amazing. I wanna be able to spend as much time here as possible and soak it in. And after my first year though, I was like, wow, I no longer wanna stay here a second longer than I have to. And that's when I really started considering graduating early in three years as a real possibility. One thing that I will say really helped me to graduate in three years is all the AP classes I took in high school, because if it wasn't for those AP classes and the credit I was able to apply from them to my degree, I wouldn't have been able to graduate in three years because uh, if I had wanted to do that without applying any AP credits, I would have had to start loading up with a full course load starting my freshman year. But I obviously didn't do that because I wasn't planning to graduate in three years my freshman year. So even though I didn't take the full 20 units per quarter that I could have my freshman year, because I had those AP classes, I was able to take a lower course load but still reach the 60 units I needed to reach at the end of my freshman year to be on track to graduate. Wow, that was a lot of numbers I just said. Hopefully that made some sense. Basically, I didn't take enough classes to be able to graduate in three years my freshman year, but because I had AP credit from taking AP in high school, I was able to stay on track to be able to graduate in three years and had that option still at the end of my freshman year. So yeah, the AP classes that I took that I applied towards my degree were APCS, that was five units right there, AP Calc, 
which I got a 4 on. If Had I gotten a 5 on that, I could have gotten 12 credits to apply to my degree, but because I only got a 4, I was only able to apply 8 credits to my degree, so that's 13 units that I was able to apply to my degree, and then also I got a 4 in AP Spanish, so I was able to place out of the language requirement for Stanford, which was really helpful because if I hadn't done that, I would have had to take a full year of Spanish or some other language, and that really would have not helped with my planning out and spacing out all the classes I needed to take to graduate. Had I gotten a five in AP Spanish, I would have been able to apply like five credits towards my degree or something, which would have been useful, but I kind of sucked at Spanish in high school. It's a miracle I even got a four, so I'm grateful for that. So yeah, if you are in high school or looking to graduate in three years, make sure you check with whatever college you want to go to, what AP credits you can apply to your degree. It can actually really help a lot. Stanford is actually kind of selective with what um, AP credits they let you apply, but I know for a lot of other schools, they let you apply like a ton more AP credits. So yeah, I started seriously considering graduating in three years the summer after freshman year because I was like, fuck all of y'all. <laughs> but yeah, I think the number one important thing to do if you want to graduate early is it's pretty obvious, but you got to plan out your entire schedule for the next however many years you're going to be at school. Because you're graduating early, you're going to probably have to really max up on your course load. And because of that, fitting all the required classes that you need to take to be able to graduate exactly on time is kind of going to be like a little game of Tetris and fitting all the right classes into the right spots and the right semesters or quarters. So that's going to be really important. So yes, number one thing you got to do is plan. The way I planned out the schedule for my remaining two years at Stanford was I first took all the classes in my CS major and figured out the order in which I needed to take them because certain classes in CS required that you take other classes first. For example, in order to take CS 110, which is like a systems class, you had to take CS 107, which was like an earlier CS class in the curriculum. So I had to figure out, okay, when planning my schedule, I need to make sure I take CS 107 before CS 110. And this might seem really trivial, but when you're planning to graduate exactly in three years with the exact number of units, exactly on time it's really important that you have this planned because you don't want to be halfway through your third year and then realize oh shit like my plan is all messed up i didn't plan it out correctly and now i can't graduate in three years so yeah first thing i did figure out all my major classes and spread those out across my two years the second thing i did was take all the other kind of general requirements for the stanford degree which aren't specific to cs so like there's stuff like oh you have to take a certain number of these ways classes, which is like a Stanford specific term, but basically they're just general education requirements that you have to hit. You have to take like a class in social inquiry and ethical reasoning and all this stuff. So I just figured those out, which classes I would take to hit these different specific areas of need and then apply that to my schedule as well. And then the last thing I did was I made sure to fill in all the gaps in my schedule. So any quarter where I wasn't taking a full 20 units per quarter, I just filled in the rest with as many easy classes as I could find. So to graduate from Stanford, you need to take 180 units. Uh, every year you take three quarters of classes. So if you take 20 units per quarter, you can take 60 units per year, which means you can graduate in three years because three times 60 is 180. Boom, math lessons of introverted madness. Two plus two is one minus three, that's four, quick maths. But yeah, so any quarter where I didn't have that 20 units, I just slapped in a bunch of smaller classes to bring me up to that 20. Didn't really matter what those other classes were. They were just basically there as filler so that I could graduate in three years but I would recommend picking classes that are on the easier side or fun side because the other classes will be hard and you'll also be taking a full course load. So you wanna to try to make it easier for yourself and not just take a full course load of hard classes. So some tips I have for planning out your super duper master plan for graduating in three years, spread out the hard classes as much as you possibly can. There was one quarter when I took like three hard classes, uh, Physics 41, Math 21, and CS 107. Those random amalgamation of letters and numbers probably meant nothing to you, but I'll put up on the screen somewhere 
what those things meant. But basically, those were three really hard classes, and that was a really hard quarter for me. And I didn't really have to do that. I could have like spread those classes out across like two different quarters so that it wouldn't have been like death to me. So I would definitely recommend doing that after you've planned out your whole schedule. Take a look at it, figure out like, hey, this quarter or semester looks like it's gonna be really hard. Can I take some of these classes and switch it with another quarter or semester that looks like it'll be easy? That way you'll have a smooth ride and you won't be like on this roller coaster of hard classes. The other thing I would try to recommend is take classes that can knock out two requirements at once. Kill two birds with one stone. Oh, I've always wanted to use that saying and now I can. For example, I took PoliSci 114S, which is like, uh, international security in a changing world. I don't know why I just read the entire title of that class to you guys. But anyway, basically that class I took to fulfill the technology and science requirement for my CS degree, but it also counted for a general education requirement for my just overall Stanford degree. So it knocked out both of these two uh, requirements at once. Probably depends on your school if you can, you know, take one class to fill two requirements at once, but check with their school. And if you can do that, I'd recommend doing that because that way, for example, instead of having to take two different classes for these two different requirements, I could just take one and then I could just take another fun or easy class instead of two different classes for these two requirements. And like I said, because your course load is probably going to be heavy on these requirements and you're going to be really maxing out the number of units you take per quarter or semester. I don't know why I keep saying quarter or semester. I'm just gonna choose when to say, I'm just gonna say quarter, but replace quarter with semester if you're at a school on a semester system. But I know you're probably gonna be taking a lot of classes. So honestly, for my schedule, I didn't really have too many places to slot in like fun classes. I know I just said like fill in the gaps with fun classes, but you don't really have time to like specifically take fun classes. So again, that's why I'm saying graduating in three years is not really for everyone because I think part of college should also be discovering yourself and figuring out who you really are and uh, liberal arts education. But if you're gonna graduate in three years, it's really gonna have to be super efficient. So you're not gonna be able to do that. So just keep that in mind. You won't really have time to take these more you know fun classes per se. So the other tip I'll give is kind of Stanford specific, but maybe not. Basically anything under three units is a really great slash easy way to fill in the gaps because if it's a one or two unit class, then it's basically not a real class. No offense to any professors who teach one or two unit classes, but uh, those classes are basically you just show up and you get credit for them. So that's a really easy way to fill in the gaps. It's probably the same way at other colleges. So just figure out um, what the like kind of lower unit number of classes are. For example, two two unit classes and a one unit class is way easier than one five unit class, even though if you do the math, if you run the calculations, they're both five units. So yeah, for some reason, there seems to be some uh, imbalance in the, in the unit system where the lower unit classes are really easy. One last thing is you do have the option to take summer classes to you know, get ahead on your degree. You probably have to pay to attend school in the summer. So you're not really gonna be uh, saving much of anything because you're just, you're, you're just paying for more time to take your classes. And obviously if you do stuff in the summer, you won't have time to go home and relax or do internships or whatever. So you gotta weigh that trade off. I didn't take any summer classes. You don't have to take summer classes to graduate in three years, but it's an option out there if you want to do that for some reason. Also, make sure you leave wiggle room in your schedule and you're not locked into 100%. You need to take these exact classes during these exact quarters because I guarantee you something wrong is gonna happen in your plan. Either a class is gonna get canceled or a class is gonna get moved from this time to this time or these two classes that you were planning to take actually are in conflict with each other and they happen at the same time and now you can't take them the same quarter. So leave yourself a little wiggle room. If you're locked exactly into your schedule and you have to take these classes, these exact quarters at these exact times, you're gonna put yourself in a very tough spot if literally anything goes wrong. So make sure you have a few places where you can swap classes or 
adjust your plan on the fly. All right, so that was the whole planning part of the schedule. Now that you've planned your entire fully loaded course load, how the heck are you gonna survive and get at least a C minus in all these classes so you can actually get the degree because you actually have to pass the classes to be able to get the degree. So yeah, first thing I'd say is, I've said this before in other videos, but try to group together classes on the same day of the week if you can. So what that means is if you can somehow group all your classes to take place on all on Monday, Wednesday, and yes, Friday, because normally at college, you know, it's an every other day class thing. If you can somehow manage to do that, that's great because then on Tuesday and Thursday, you don't have any classes to go to. You don't have to be worried like, oh, I have to go to class in the middle of the day and you can just have like uninterrupted time to either rest because you're probably going to be exhausted from taking all these classes or do your homework because you're going to have a lot of homework from these classes. And I, for me, I just found it way easier to kind of focus and get shit done when I didn't have a random class in the middle of the day that I had to go to. And I just had the whole day uninterrupted. So like, you know, even if I had like just one, one hour class at 1 PM, I wouldn't be able to get into that focus zone because I'd be like, oh shit, like I got to go to class at one. But if you just have the whole day unblocked, that's great. Of course, it's probably not going to be possible every quarter for you to be able to plan your schedule like this and have entirely free days. But I would try to say, yeah, try to put as many classes on certain days of week as possible and leave other days as free as possible so that you can do what I just said. Next thing is real talk, real talk chief. You can't care as much about your grades. I know in high school, you were probably super anal, you were a valedictorian, whatever, whatever. Listen, we're trying to graduate in three years. This is a speed run. We're not trying to, you know, get all the stars here. So if you're trying to graduate in three years, you're honestly, gonna have to not care as much about grades because maybe you're a genius, but I don't think there's a way for you to get, you know, all A's when you're also maxing out your course load. So you gotta try and pick and choose your battles here. I don't think grades are really a battle worth choosing unless you're going to med school because in the real world, no one's gonna care about your GPA. They're just gonna care that you got your degree. So kind of on that note, you kind of have to apply that philosophy of not caring about your grades to stuff you do if you're on a time crunch. For example, if I was on a problem set and I didn't know the answer to a question and the question was worth like two points on the whole problem set, I'd be like, I'm skipping this problem because if I get this problem correct or incorrect, it's not really gonna affect whether I pass the class or not. Maybe it'll be the difference between an A plus and an A. Not that I really got an A plus ever in any classes, but you know what I'm trying to say. Tiny things here and there might be the difference between like an excellent student and a student who passes. But guess what? You're just trying to be a student who passes because you're trying to get out of the school ASAP. Try and not stress over every little detail in every single one of your classes because you honestly don't have the time or energy to do that if you're trying to graduate early. I'd also say try to go to office hours at Stanford at least. There were a lot of office hours for a lot of classes. And a lot of the times, the TAs will give you a lot of hints for a problem or just give away the answer, basically, if you annoy them enough. So I think, you know, going to office hours to be able to review the concepts and learn more and blah, 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 get a great education, all that stuff is great. And you get the added bonus of being able to finish your homework faster if a TA helps you with it. Honestly, it's gonna be hard. I would, it's obviously harder to graduate in three years than four years because you're compressing all the shit you gotta do into a smaller time frame. But honestly, I think 90% of it is probably like just a mentality thing because like, it's honestly not that hard. And I'm honestly not even trying to flex right now or say like, oh, it's not that hard, look at me, I'm so awesome. It's honestly like, it's not too difficult. Just imagine like a normal course load of 15 units, which is what the average Stanford student takes. And then just add like a five unit freaking creative writing or pottery or art class to that you know it's just like a just pretend it's like a nice little fun hobby on the side that you're adding to your course load that also has the added benefit of letting you leave this hellhole earth here so yeah i really think the mentality was what really helped a lot just being just believing in myself saying hey i can do this it's not gonna be the worst thing 
Yes, I won't be able to get an A plus in every class, but I wasn't doing that anyway when I when I was planning to graduate in four years. So whatever, we can do this. And yeah, just believe in yourself. I'm just gonna quickly go through my entire schedule at Stanford. Hopefully this doesn't take like 30 minutes, but yeah, I'm just gonna talk about what requirements I knocked out each quarter, whether a quarter was hard or easy or whatever, and just basically the overall vibes of that quarter. So yeah, my first quarter at Stanford, I didn't really know what the heck I was doing. I just took classes that I thought seemed interesting and fun. I took CS106B, which was a requirement for the CS degree. I took this Thinking Matters course, which was like a general education requirement. And then I took these two other kind of fun classes, conversational Chinese and this narrative class just to explore, broaden my horizon at Stanford. This was kind of an easy-ish quarter, one of the easier quarters I had at Stanford. And it was also pretty useful because I think I was able to use uh, the narrative class to knock out one of the ways requirements. The Thinking Matters thing was also a required class and CS106B was required for a CS major. So knocked out some requirements, pretty easy. Overall, I'd say this was an A tier quarter. <laughs> Oh boy, this winter quarter 2016, this was a dark time. So as you can see, I took a full 20 units. I think this was when I, the idea started germinating in my mind, like, hey, maybe I can graduate in three years. Let's see if I can handle a full course load. Wow, that was a bad idea because this quarter was very painful for me. As you can see, I took a beginning conversational Chinese again. I took poetry and poetics because at that time, I was still kind of interested in majoring in English. I was like, let's see how this goes. This class was like, okay, but it didn't really like make me more interested in majoring in English, but I think I counted it again towards the ways requirement. And wow, the big three, I took physics 41, math 21, and CS 107. All three of these classes absolutely freaking wrecked me, but all three were required for the CS degree, so I had to knock them out. But this is what I'm talking about. If I could go back and do it, I would have spread these three classes across like two different quarters or even three different quarters because taking all three at the same time was not good for my mental health. Luckily, I passed all these classes and I was able to apply it towards my degree. But again, not a good time. This was definitely like an F tier. This was my def this was definitely the worst quarter I had at Stanford ever. Freshman spring, I was kind of traumatized from that uh, really hard winter quarter and I was like, fuck it, there's no way I'm gonna graduate in three years. I'm just gonna take a really easy quarter. I took this young adult literature class, which I don't even think counted for any ways, but whatever, it was easy. I took the other required physics class for the CS degree. A lot of physics, I don't know why. This class also kind of killed me. And then I took uh, Power One, which is like a rhetoric, a, a speaking and writing class that's required for Stanford students. It was pretty medium. But this quarter, I only took three classes, so it was the easiest quarter I had at Stanford in terms of number of units, and it was pretty chill. So I'll give it a B. I didn't really, it wasn't really that fun of a quarter because these classes were all kind of meh, but it was easy at least. So B tier quarter. All right, sophomore fall. This is when I started to get serious about graduating in three years, and from here on out, we're just taking 20 units per quarter maxing our shit out so that we can get out of here because freshman year kind of was a shit show. I think winter quarter really kind of just wrecked me and I was just like, oh, that that's it, I'm out of here. So I took these two CS classes that are required for the CS degree. This, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. CS 103, it's like a logic proof based class for CS and CS 110, which is wow, like a, an even more intense version of CS 107. CS 107 and CS 110 are like the two horsemen of the apocalypse. So, wow, these two CS classes required, toughed it out. And then I also took uh, these two history classes to take care of some ways. I don't remember which classes I took for which ways, but I just know which classes I took for a ways. And these two classes were for ways. They were the history of China and the history of South Africa. So if you wanna ask me any shit about China or South Africa, I can maybe give you like one fact about each. This quarter, I'd say it wasn't too hard, wasn't too bad. It was much better than the previous 20 unit quarter I had. So I'd give this a B, the vibes were 
better this time and it gave me hope that I could actually graduate in three years, that I didn't die this quarter. Winter quarter, I dedicated entirely to knocking out some CS degree requirements. And I don't know why winter quarter always seems to be the worst fucking quarters for me, maybe because some weird shit with the winter solstice. But yeah, I took engineering 40, which is like an EE class. The labs here really killed me, but that was fine. I took um, geology one for like a science elective for the CS degree. I took math 51, which was a math elective for the CS degree. And then I took poli sci 114S, which is the class I talked about earlier. So just knocking out a bunch of auxiliary classes for the CS degree, even though none of these classes have anything to do with CS, but at Stanford, I guess, uh, I'd rate this quarter probably, probably a C tier because it's winter quarter and I hate winter quarters. <laughs> and yeah, that brings us to spring quarter, which was also a pretty intense quarter. I took three CS classes to knock out some CS electives. I took CS 109, which is required for all CS majors. And then I took these two electives. 155 was very tough. 227B was kind of fun, actually. I kind of got obsessed with this class and doing well with this class, which goes against the advice I said earlier, which is to pick your battles, but that was a fun class. And then I also took this philosophy class for ways. This class was great because it was five units, but also easy. So it filled up my schedule while not being something that actually took up my actual time. So thank you for that philosophy. And then I also took power two, which is the follow-up to power one, which is required for all students to graduate. It was fine. My teacher in that class was actually pretty chill. So if you're watching this, which I know you aren't, but if you are, you're chill. Thanks for that. Spring quarter, I would give this quarter a C plus because it was still a tough quarter, but the vibes were a lot better because it was spring and not winter. All right, home stretch. Third year, or graduating this year, I took three more CS classes, started on my classes to fulfill the AI electives that I had to take for my AI degree. So I took CS 131, which is computer vision. I'm not sure that means anything to you, whatever. I'll put a definition right here. That was an AI class and CS 221, which is like the intro AI class. Both of those I needed for my CS degree in the AI section. I took CS 157, which was a super easy class. I recommend that for CS majors at Stanford to knock out one of the math electives, actually. It doesn't count in the CS part of a degree. It counts for the math elective part of the CS degree, but take it because it's easy. I didn't really have to do anything in this class. I didn't even have to go to lecture, I'm pretty sure, in this class. I just had to like do like a 10 minute homework every week. And then I got a freaking B minus in this class. That's not a good grade, but I passed. Then I took English 91. Shout out English 91. Great class. Also, not too hard. If you just give effort in these creative writing classes, you'll get an A. So that's good. I think I use that as just like a filler class to get myself up to 20 units. And then I took this Chinese religions class. I'm Chinese, so boom, instant advantage for me in this class. I took it to fulfill a ways. Wasn't too hard. Got out of there, fine. Probably rate this quarter B tier. Wasn't too hard. And the vibes were pretty okay. All right, winter quarter. There's a lot of classes here, so I'm just gonna read them off the paper. I took five CS classes, but one of them doesn't really count. It was CS 22A. That was just a one unit class that you literally just showed up and you got credit for, so that doesn't really count. I took CS 161, which was like an algorithms class. That was hard kind of for a CS major. I took CS 224N, which was another AI class that I needed for my AI degree. I took CS 547, which was also another one unit class. Again, basically you just show up and you get credit. So these one unit classes come in handy to fill in your schedule. And then I took CS 210A, which was like the final project class, this, the senior project class for CS. This class was fun and is what led me to my job that I just quit. But it was a good class. I got, got a freaking A plus in that class. That's right, boom. Who th look at this big old brain. And then I rounded up that quarter with English 91A, Asian American autobiography. I'm an Asian American, boom. Again, instant advantage for me in this class. Uh, that was a great class to professor. 
is a really famous writer, and I really liked getting to learn from him. That was really awesome, and I'm really grateful I got to experience that class. This quarter kind of breaks the trend of awful winter quarters. I'd probably give this quarter a B, a B, a B tier. I think that's pretty solid for this quarter. All right, finally, we get to the last quarter of my time at Stanford. And during this quarter, I was actually kind of stressed because I was like, what if I missed some requirement that I was unaware of and graduation day comes and they're like, oh shit, actually you didn't take this class. You got to stay here at least another quarter. That would have really not been a good time. Luckily for me, my planning uh -huh, actually worked and I figured it out. So that was helpful. So yeah, to finish off my time at Stanford, I took the last four CS classes I needed to get my CS degree. A lot of CS classes backloaded in this last year, but I took the second part of the senior project class, CS 210B. I also, I got an A in that class, not an A plus, but an A, that's still pretty good. I took CS 142, which was like web development. That was actually a pretty useful class. CS 168, not as useful of a class, just a lot of freaking math and algorithms. And I'm pretty sure I don't remember anything from that class. And CS 247, which was HCI Design Studio. It was like a design class. That was actually a pretty fun class. It wasn't as intense, so that was a good time. And I also took English 90, another creative writing class with the same professor I took English 91 with. So we had a bond, we built on that bond. It was a good time. I give this quarter an S++++ because it was my last quarter at Stanford and I finally got the hell out of here. So yeah, that was my time at Stanford. Hopefully that was useful for you guys to see exactly what classes I took and how I planned it out. Again, not trying to flex, that's just literally the classes I took. It's just a fact, it's not a flex, it's just my life. Uh, I don't know if any of that was helpful, hopefully it was at least interesting, I don't know, who knows. Uh, if you wanna hear me talk more about this kind of stuff, leave a comment, and yeah. Last thing I'll say is, I don't know, I feel like college, like I said, college, everyone makes out like it's supposed to be the best time of your life. You're supposed to become BFFs with everyone in your dorm and you're supposed to be having so much sex and going to so many parties and wow, why would you ever want to leave college early because isn't it supposed to be awesome? But it's okay if you don't like college or you want to leave early, you shouldn't feel like you're trapped somewhere and you have to live this dream experience that, you know, people have been selling to you your whole life. Because I felt that way for sure, because Stanford is supposed to be this, wow, amazing school, you know? It's supposed to make all your dreams come true. And then I went there and I was like, it wasn't that for me. And I was like, wait, is there something wrong with me? Or I'm like not having a good time here? But then I kind of realized like, it wasn't anything wrong with me and it wasn't anything wrong with Stanford, to be honest. We just didn't vibe. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna leave early. I'm just gonna graduate in three years. And I think that was honestly a good decision for me because uh, what would have been my senior year is when COVID started. So actually that was a really great decision to leave early. But um, yeah, basically what I'm just trying to say is do what makes sense for you. I think it's good to have a college degree in society because for some reason, like I said, our society has decided that in order to do certain jobs, you need a college degree. But just do what's best for you, man. Uh, I believe in you guys. Just live your lives. I don't know. I'm just a guy on the internet. Okay, this is getting way too rambly. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, like the video if it was helpful. Subscribe. Beep boop, beep boop. I'm just a robot who asks for likes and subscribes. Okay, whatever. I'm, I'm, I've gone off the rails. Okay. Thanks for watching. Uh, stay safe. Stay sane. Peace.